Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm Joel. I'm Gavin. And this is, is A Stable Life. Are you guys excited? Are you guys ready? Because there's snow. Woo! Good morning Buster, Rocky, Leia, all the horses. If you guys couldn't tell, Gavin and I are super happy to be finally back together, back to the daily grind. How have things been while I've been gone, Gavin? They've been absolutely fantastic, except for a couple problems and a lot more problems. What a way to describe that. What are some of those problems? You'll just have to find out later like the rest of the viewers. Oh, that's exciting. Does that mean we should get started feeding horses? Absolutely. Hey, just gonna be right over here measuring out. And while he's busy doing that, I'm gonna get started on hay. And I gotta tell you what guys, this pitchfork and wheelbarrow, as you can see, we just about have this large square bale gone, piece by piece. Craziness. Alrighty, we have hay in the stall, grain in the stall, and that means it's time to get the muck buckets out of the stalls and into the aisleways. What's this I understand you have a new and improved way of doing manure day? I like that rhyme, Joel. It's not that much better, but I just mixed it up a little bit. I'm excited to find out what this new and improved way is. I'm excited for you to find out too. <laughs> All right, we've got an update regarding sriracha. Joel, tell them what it is. So a couple days ago, my mom was feeding horses and noticed that sriracha was acting a bit differently. You see, it's important to notice the body language of these horses. That body language is something that we need to have down to a science. The way Jack comes into the barn is definitely different than the way Archer comes into the barn. And we noticed that sriracha was acting unlike sriracha. So upon a closer look, he ended up having a high temperature of 104 degrees. So we ended up calling the vet and a lot of things have been taken care of. There's a possibility that sriracha has Lyme's disease. We will be updating you guys, of course, how things go. But for now, what we need to do is take his temperature. And for horses, this is not something that you do from the mouth. So I'm gonna go to the other side. So in the meantime, Gavin's gonna update you guys how things are going while I'm taking his temperature. Just in case you guys don't know what Lyme disease is, it's a problem that could cause movement problems such as arthritis in the future for him. All right guys, good news. We have Sriracha's temperature and his temperature for today is 98.8 degrees. So we're definitely moving in the right direction. All right, Sriracha? Way better than 104. And Lyme's disease is only one of the possible sicknesses that Sriracha may have. Since his fever was almost at 105 degrees, that does open him up to the possibility of equine influenza. Strangles or other viral infections. So immediately right off the bat, we are quarantining him just to ensure that he doesn't spread it to any, other, any of the other horses at our stable. Thus why he is still in his stall. But now for some good news. The vet's been by several times and has given him several doses of antibiotics intravenously, which is into his veins, to help him get over whatever the case is. And she's also taken a number of samples. And all of these tests are just to see what sickness he has. And taking a look at his grain bucket and his hay feeder, they're both empty, which is a great sign because that means that he not only ate all of his hay, but he ate all of his grain which means that he's back to being healthy again. So the antibiotics are working, which is awesome. But that doesn't mean that Sriracha's care is over. Once those tests come back and let us know exactly what he has, it will let us know what we need to do with his care moving forward, which is why we're being so careful with him right now. So today he might be getting more antibiotics or he might be switching to a different type of medicine. It all hinges on the vet and when she gets back to us for today. So for now, we're gonna move things on over to feeding horses. And now we finally come to the big part of the morning, letting in the horses. But before we do that, do you guys know what time it is? It's donkey time. Gavin, I'm seeing a problem with Rocky. His blanket's all fajangled. Let me fix ya. Come on in here, Gavin's got your grain. You okay, Rocky? There you go. His blanket's fixed. Well, the donkeys look good, but I think Poncho's ready to be let out. Don't worry, Poncho, I'm coming there next. I definitely think Poncho was ready to come in. He was itching for the food. And while Gavin's working on giving Tucker his grain, I'm gonna go ahead and let in the middle pasture. Hey, George, good morning. 
Temperature's not too bad right now, by the way. Good morning, Roni. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, George. Good morning, champ. Come on, casino. William Rebel! You guys see him all the way down there? There we go, they're making their way up. So last night we got a snowstorm that came through that ended up dropping some snow. And as you can see right now, it's kind of flurrying right now. It also dropped just a little bit of rain, but nothing that we needed to keep the horses in for. They are more than happy being out in this weather. Rebel and William are in their stalls. So now we can let in the big field. Lawrence Wade, another loose straps but fire, but a different one, at least that's progress. Good morning, good to see you Duke. Danny, Archer, Skywalker. Obi. Good morning, Tucker. Ooh, Gavin, sneaking in there. Good to see you, Tucker. Come on, Argento. Oh, Argento. Samson. Weather. Good morning, good morning. And Declan and Docs are on their way up. They were getting some last minute bites out of the round bale feeder. Here you go, Gavin. Thank you. So is this where we get to find out the new way of doing manure? Yes, it is. Well, enlighten us, what is it? So the new way, instead of doing the main wagon first and then the two in Tucker's pasture, we're doing the two in Tucker's pasture first and then the main one. Uh, what does that change? Basically nothing. It doesn't change the amount of loads or the amount of time it takes to finish, but it's just nice to finish the main one and then not have to do two more after it. Have you noticed uh, a decrease in the amount of time it takes to do manure? Overall, maybe about 10 second difference. That adds up. Yeah. That gives us more time to record little bits like this. Woo! While Gavin's working on manure and enjoying the beautiful snowfall, we're gonna get started working on the horses. As you guys are aware, we have a couple horses that are in need of some special circumstances. You guys will remember that we used to have to take MTG and work on rubbing that MTG in on the legs. But the rain rod is just about gone and now we're working on skin care. Getting those hair follicles to come back. Which means we're using Banex. What's nice about Banex is that it's not an oil-based substance, which means that I can spray it on his legs and I don't have to rub it in using my bare hands and gloves. It's a nice change. George and Declan, we're still actively picking out the... Oh, wow. Nice little stone bruise there. George and Declan, we are still actively picking out their hooves. George here has a stone bruise. That has the potential to be an abscess, so I'm very glad we got that. Hey, come here, come here. Sorry. And of course, that means we are also still putting in copper tox. And this is daily. So I'm doing this, Gavin's doing this, and my mom is doing this. I'm glad we caught that. Hopefully we can prevent that. It's all right, it's all right. This may hurt him a little bit because there was a stone bruise there. Hopefully we can prevent that from turning into an abscess, but uh, the ground's not frozen, so we're doing everything we can to prevent this from turning into a worse issue. But they're doing well, which is what we like to see. Preventative maintenance is really important, especially when it comes to horses. Just doing the little things every day really adds up to having the better care for the horses. And remember, we're not trying to keep these horses alive just for a year or two. We're trying to get them to reach their maximum lifespan, which is upwards of 20 plus years. And so when the weather gets crazy and uncooperative, we gotta make sure that we give these guys our very best attention. Don't we, Sky? Yeah. We're working on it, William. Speaking of, William just reminded me that now that we have all of our daily care taken care of, let's work on getting hay out and seeing how things look out in the pasture. down here at our round bale feeder and you can see we've got some hay left over in this feeder. This hay has been left over in this feeder now for a couple weeks. What ended up happening was we had a round bale that had a lot of weeds inside it. It happens from time to time especially as we're acquiring new hay fields and so the horses weren't too interested in eating that and I don't want to just keep dumping new hay on top of the old hay and building it up to the point that we now have an overflow situation. So we're gonna clean out the feeder. Using our system here with the bucket and chains, we'll take this divider off and then scoop this all up. Now, since this hay is still edible for the horses, and some of the horses may want this hay, I'm going to take the hay and put it next to the compost pile over here. That way, for any of the horses that wanna pick through it, they're more than welcome to, and they can eat what they'd like out of it. And the hay is right where it needs to be so that when it's done composting, we can scoop that right up and put it back in the fields. And then mow it and put it right back in the hay feeder next year. It's funny how that stuff works, isn't it? So let's get shoveling.
Alrighty guys, good deal. Check it out. Nice and clean and ready for a bale. And in order to encourage the horses to eat some hay, we're only gonna be putting one round bale in here just to make sure that they clean it up and mop it up nice because all that other hay that we took out, they could still eat. So we don't wanna overdo it with giving them too much to eat. Then we have a problem where we create a lot of waste. But now that I got this done, I can move on to getting round bales put out, which is good because Gavin's already finished with manure, so I'm behind schedule. Stable. Are you ready to go out, Tucker? I always think it's so neat watching horses drink water and you can literally see the water going through their necks into their bodies. It's, it's cool. Just about have morning feeding all mopped up. Just waiting on these guys to finish getting their drinks and then I can close this gate. And then Sriracha is going to be able to go into this lower arena here so that he can kind of stretch his legs and get out of the stall just a little bit. We haven't heard anything yet from the vet, but uh, we're expecting news shortly. So we just finished up with lunch. Gavin, how was it? Exquisite. Tracy, how was it? It was good. What did you have? Halushki. Woo! Yes, it was pretty good. How have you been doing? We haven't seen you on the videos. Where are you at? I'm here. I'm in, I'm in the farm. Looks like you're packing up, what, a lot of jelly beans? Yes, lots of jelly beans. And chocolate covered pretzels. Exciting! Alrighty, so Gavin, tell them what's next up on the agenda. Eating some gummy bears. Where did, where did you get those gummy bears? It's a secret. As you guys can see, the truck's pulling in. And we're out of fuel. You may have noticed we're not using our four-wheeler this morning for Menorah Day. We were using the Veggie Boys four-wheeler. So next up on the list is... Getting some fuel. Good news, guys, we got fuel. So Gavin, how empty was the four-wheeler? It, it was pretty close to empty, and by that I mean it completely ran out and stopped working. Nice. All right, we're out here in the cow pastures and look who came to say hello. Joel, we've hit a roadblock. I know! I can't, if these cows attack this truck, I am gonna be so dead. This is not my, this is my parents' truck. Out of the way, Moo Moo's. Out of the way. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> if they go straight, the gate's open. Okay, thank goodness. Woohoo, that was very close. Because uh, if they went straight, they'd have been free. Alrighty guys, next up, as you can see, this is the area the large square bale originally was. All that's left is just a tiny little bit of hay, which we're probably gonna go through this afternoon, which means that we need to get this one, a large square bale. And we're gonna set it down right here so that we can start taking hay out of that bale. So Gavin's gonna be the cameraman for up there. <laughs> I'm shocked, I didn't think you'd be able to make the turn.
lot of you guys have been wondering how the heated vest works and where the battery goes. This is the battery. It goes on the lower right hand side of the vest, right in this little pocket, little wire that you just plug right in. Doesn't add much bulk to you. You do feel it there, but it's nothing too bad. And then to turn it on, you just hold. Glowing red means it's warming up. And then to set your heat settings, you just double tap. White's low, blue's medium, red's high. Hey guys, so I got some good news. We finished with afternoon feeding. It went very smooth. We had no issues. None of the horses had any straps hanging down and none of them were limping, which is so good to see. They're all out eating that good old hay. Now as for Sriracha, we've got no updates. The vet just hasn't gotten back to us today. She's a very busy woman. There's a lot of animals that's under her care. And it's been par for the course that we've been hearing from her in the late afternoon to early evening. So Sriracha is going to be staying in his stall for tonight. His stall is all clean. He has fresh hay and water and he ate all of his grain. His temperature is good and his appetite is back. So those are all great signs. We're basically just waiting to hear from the tests in regards to what he had and what we're going to be doing with this treatment moving forward. So make sure that you guys are subscribed and keep up to date because I'll be happy to have the update for you in the next video. Uh, more than likely, we'll be finding out the information after this video is already finished up. So it'll have to be in the next video that I'll be giving you guys the update and I'm sorry about that. Okay guys, so as you're aware of in the last couple videos, uh, we changed our Amazon list a little bit, but we've gotten a lot more packages in. So we wanted to send thank you to everybody. So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna be sh again going through everything for each item that you guys sent and just sending a special thank you on behalf of A Stable Life to each and every single one of you guys for all that you did. Uh, you're really setting us up nice here with all of the supplies for our horses. Uh, your generosity is really heartwarming. So Gavin's gonna kick things off and then we'll be passing it back and forth. All right, thank you to Visa for the no thrust dry formula. You rock. Uh, thank you to Daniel for the gallon size concentrate. We use this a lot in the summertime for the flies. So thank you so much, you're amazing. Michelle, thank you so very much for the MTG. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Linda as well for the bottle of Vetresin, very useful and we will definitely give Tucker a hug for you. Patty, thank you so very much for the MTG. In the wet season, we go through this stuff like crazy. It goes on all the horses, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you to the anonymous enjoyer of the channel for the copper talks, especially as recently it's been very helpful and needed. So thank you. Thank you to Visa again for the MTG. You're even better, I can't believe it. <laughs> well guys, <laughs> this is why they bag it special because it came opened, but that's why they keep it all nice and inside there so it ended up not being an issue a stable life fan thank you so very much for the electrolytes we sincerely appreciate it like we mentioned in the previous couple videos we go through this stuff like butter in the hot days thank you to lee as well for the electrolyte and as joel said we go through it like butter when it's hot mud shield power and horseshoe secret both of these guys go hand in hand one for the wet season and one for the dry and thank you sherry so much We'll make sure that we give the horses a big hug for you. And finally, thank you to Jim and Cheryl for the gallon of concentrate of flash spray. We appreciate it so much. We mentioned it enough, but I honestly feel like we just can't say it enough, guys. Thank you so much. You guys are just too generous. Thank you. Yes, couldn't agree more. It's gonna be on that awesome note that we're drawing an end to the video today. If you guys haven't, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure that you're subscribed. As for the question of the day, it's going to be, do you ride English or Western? And which do you prefer? We'd like to thank you for watching. And as always, we'll, we'll see, see you in the next one.